So this is kind of the idea of how live loops work. I find it's more beneficial to use live loops to come up with ideas before you actually have a song that's the kind of beefed up like this because typically if I just need an idea for the pre, I would go in like I did before and just record it in here and do a bunch of takes. But let's say I'm starting from scratch. I'm gonna open up my loop browser and just bring any old guitar loop in. Electric guitar, genre, indie. Okay, let's use, let's use the dis disco pop rhythm guitar. So I'm just gonna drag this in. Uh, on an empty slot here. I can also bring a couple other. Bring, just bring other simple loops on here. Pop, pop bass. Let's bring a bass down in the second track. We have a bass now. And let's bring a drummer track in. Cool. Bridge, drummer chorus track, drummer intro track. One more bass. Here's an, a disco bass. Okay, so we have two bass ideas, three rhythm ideas, and three drummer tracks. So let's try out all these ideas together, switching back and forth. And so the idea of live loops is it's all being calculated by the tempo. So everything is locked in at 96 beats per minute, and nothing will um, come in at the wrong time. Everything is going to come appropriately on the first beat of, of the rhythm. So for example, if I press this pad, and I want it to come in on the one, then I just have to wait till it goes around. So you can see if I press play, it's coming around. You can see it coming around. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Now this is playing. Now you can see they're both coming, they're both filling up at the same time, right? these run at the same time. Two. I want the other one to come in. One, two, three, four, one, two. I'm just going to come in on the one here. And now I'll try some drum sets. Four, one, two, three. So that sounds much better. Let's try bringing something else in, in C sharp. Or maybe let's try this guitar again. Three, four, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, play. So that kind of works. Okay, so that works. If we want that, we can record that exactly like right into our session over on the right view. And let's press record this R with the horizontal lines. That means basically like this icon and this icon are the same, but this one just has an R over it. So that means you're gonna now, if that's pressed, you're kind of arming this bit window to record into this window. Place your cursor where you want to record. So we just had those being played. So if I press play or if I press record, they'll continue They'll continue to play again. But for example, if I only had one of these playing, it would only record one of them. So if I press record now, it's just gonna, we're gonna record everything in on this side. And we'll, I'll show you what um, some cool things you can do with this. See it's coming in here. So let's say I want to switch now to this drum set. Two. Now I'm recording this drum set here. And you can see it's coming in here. Let's say I want to leave the drums out for a bit. Two, three. I want this one to come back in. Five, six, seven, eight. 
three. It's coming in. Let's say I want to get the stabs out. Stabs are out. Drums are out. Let's bring the stabs back in. See how everything is coming back in right on the one? Four. One, two, three, string drum set. Five, six, seven, eight. Press stop, and then you have all your instruments here with that exact kind of little song you've built. So you can imagine if you had little vocal snippets here and there, a verse idea for a vocal, and you add a vocal track, arm the vocal track, recording little verse ideas, little pre-ideas, little chorus ideas, and then work them in to um, where you think they might fit in your song. So that's the power of, of live loops. The next thing I wanna look at is the step sequencer, which is another big update um, Logic did with 10.5.1. Uh, so the step sequencer is different than live loops. Step sequencer is in the piano roll editor area. So how I would go about using the step sequencer